What's up boys and girls? Hope you're doing well. This is Mr. Bass and today I want to talk to you about the top 10 things I hate about my Hobie Pro Angler with the 360 Mirage Drive. Let's get to it. First and foremost, I want to say that I love my Hobie Pro Angler. I've owned three of them and I really do love it. It's a great boat. It does a ton of things. It has a ton of features. It is probably one of the absolute best fishing platforms on the market, bar none. But there's a lot to hate about it, too. And I think I know the good, bad, and the ugly pretty well. Let me share with you today the ugly. Without question, number one, price. These boats are insane when it comes to price. Now I know there's a lot that goes into these boats, into this technology. The Hobie 360 Mirage Drive, a lot of technology, a lot of expensive components. I get all that. I understand it. And when you're the top dog in the market, you kind of you have the, the privilege to set your own price and Hobie's not been afraid to do that. But these kayaks are off the charts expensive. And unless you have a very specific need, price alone might be enough to say, I think I'm going to pass. As of today, September 2023, a Hobie Pro Angler 14 with the 360 Mirage Drive is $5,700. $99. That's right, boys and girls, $1 shy of $5,800 or $201 shy of $6,000 for a plastic boat. 6000 bucks. It's a lot of money. Number two of my least desirable features of this boat has to be the Mirage 360 Drive. What? That's right. The single most feature that everybody looks to for this boat. And the main reason why so many people buy this boat is the Hobie Mirage 360 Drive. And if you go watch my other video where I talk about my 10 most favorite things, this drive is one of my 10 most favorite things. But it's also one of my least most favorite things. And here's why. It's a pain in the rear. It's quirky. It's not easy to use. It's very finicky. It's easy to break. There's a belt drive in there. It is easy to break the drive, the belt. It is easy to, in so many ways, mess this thing up. And if you're not really astute at understanding what it takes to keep that Mirage 360 drive maintained, properly. It is going to frustrate you to no end, and you are going to break it. I guarantee you, you will break it. You will have to get it repaired. Now, sometimes those repairs will be covered under warranty, but not always. And that Mirage Drive, I don't know the exact price, but it's around a thousand bucks for that bad boy. And the price of it alone, I mean, let's say you don't break it and you just accidentally drop it in the lake very pricey replacement. So that is definitely my second least favorite thing about this boat. Okay, this could be number 2A, but it's number 3. The weight of this boat. <laughs> it is so freaking heavy. How heavy is this boat? Try 150 pounds? The fitted weight that they say on their website is 148 pounds and change. 150 pound boat, boys and girls. You cannot car top this boat. There's guys who do it. I'm not saying there aren't. But it is heavy. And if you're not young and super fit, you, it's going to wear you out fast. All the shiny is going to rub off that boat really, really fast if you don't have a way 
to, to haul that thing. And so because it's so heavy, what does that mean? It means that usually you got to buy a trailer for this thing, which means you're not just paying 6,000 bucks for the boat. You're probably going to pay a couple thousand bucks for a trailer on top of it, maybe more, maybe less. There are cheap trailers out there. There are really expensive trailers out there, but I don't think it's very realistic to think that you can just car top this thing and carry it on a regular cart. Not, it doesn't work guys. It really doesn't. So please keep that in mind. Number four, quality issues. For some reason, these newer boats seem to be having more and more quality issues. I have several buddies who have had cracked hulls, who've had serious leaks, who have had lots of quality problems, and everything I'm reading on the forums is that these quality problems are getting so out of hand that Hobie's not, they're not warranting items the way they used to. Um, now I know every situation is different and I can say that I have not had any quality issues, not extreme quality issues on any of my boats with the exception of the Mirage drives, which I've already talked about. I will tell you two issues I've had with my most recent boat that I think are quality issues. Uh, but I, I, they're not warranty level quality issues. One is my boat leans to the right all the time you get in it and it leans and it leans and it leans and it's really annoying at times and i can counter it by sitting more to the left of the seat but who wants to do that i want to sit in the center of the seat i have not been able to figure out why that boat leans to the right now maybe i could take it and get it try to get a warranty out of that but i do not see that happening the other issue that i have with this boat is if it gets rained on, and I've had a lot of tournament, a lot meaning a handful of tournaments, where the boat sits outside in a rainstorm all night long, and in the morning, you open that hatch, and the boat is full of water. That is not good. Now, it doesn't take on water when I'm on the lake, but when it gets rained on, it takes on water, and that's problematic. I did not have that with my other two pro anglers. But this one, I am having that issue. So to me, with all the other quality talk I've heard, it just kind of makes me think, yeah, in 2023, 2024, you probably need to worry about quality. I hate to say it, but you probably do. To tell you the truth, when I say these are the things I hate about this boat, those four things are really it. Now, I have other things that kind of bug me on a minor level, and I'm going to share those with you, but they're not deal killers at all they're just minor annoyances things that i would like to see improved a little disingenuous to say i hate these things about the boat uh, they just bug me a little bit so number five the fifth thing that i hate has got to be the horizontal rod storage now the i love the horizontal rod storage it's one of my favorite things about the boat but when you put three rods on this side and three rods on the on the other side and they're all piled on top of each other, it gets cluttered quick. It really does. And uh, it, can, it can drive you nuts at times. It, it can drive you bonkers uh, trying to manage and deal with the rods. So there's some people who don't even use those horizontal rod tubes. They close them up and use them to run cables and stuff through. I still use them. They're still a vitally important feature for me. But they're a pain. They really are a pain to deal with rods on top of each other. And the reason they're, they're it's such a pain is because the space between your seat and each of the gunnels is only so far. And when you pile three rods in there on top of each other, it's just space. And who can complain about that? They give you more space on this boat than probably about any other boat on the market. But it is something you need to be aware of if you're thinking about buying the boat. The sixth thing I hate about this boat is you may as well take your paddle and throw it in the lake. This is not a paddling boat. It just doesn't paddle well. It really doesn't. Um, but 
The reason that's not a deal killer to me is you have the Mirage Drive. You don't need a paddle. You can pedal. And the pedaling on that boat is awesome. So to me, it's not a deal killer. But if you really want a boat that you think, man, I'm going to paddle a lot out of this boat, don't pick this one. It's too big. It's too wieldy. It's too heavy. Pick something else because this is not a boat for paddlers. The seventh thing that I hate about the Hobie Pro Angler is the same thing that I hate about all Hobie boats. And that is, even though they have an amazing pedal drive, and in this case, I already talked about the 360 Mirage Drive, even though they have a pedal drive, you don't get instant reverse. The beauty of a prop drive pedal system is you can pedal forward, but you can instantly on a dime pedal backwards as well. You cannot do that in a Hobie. The only way you can go from forward to reverse is you have to manipulate something with your hands. If you've got the 180 drive, you've got to pull a cable. If you've got the 360 drive, you've got to turn that 360 knob. And it's just it's just not convenient. You, most of the time when you need instant reverse, you've just hooked into a fish and you're trying to land that fish. You don't have a free hand. It can get crazy and it can be frustrating. That's the only downside to those kick up fins. The eighth thing that you might want to hate about this boat, I have definitely hated about it at times, is its size. The fact that it's so big sometimes makes it a problem on the water. And the most obvious time when it's a problem is when you're fishing in high wind. When you're fishing in strong winds or strong current, but more particularly strong winds, that massive boat will catch the wind and it will blow you around. And this is a t this is a common problem with all kayaks. Kayaks don't do well in the wind. You're going to get blown around. But that really big, wide, long boat, it's like a sail almost. And when, when you're in really windy conditions, you've got to be fighting and manipulating, oh man, just constantly. Not a deal killer, like I said, because you got to deal with that with almost every boat. But this one is kind of extreme and really strong winds. You're going to feel it. You really are. The ninth thing I hate about my Hobie Pro Angler are the two rod holders that are recessed into the boat. They fill up with water, and it's just so annoying. Why they can't come up with a better solution there, and I guess maybe I'm not smart enough to tell them what it is. But they give you these little chintzy rubber caps uh, to to keep the water out, and it, they will work if you if you keep the cap in. But so many times you don't want to go through the the hassle of putting a cap on or taking the cap off, and many times you're in a rainstorm out fishing and you got fishing rods in the tube and it's going to fill up with water. That's just a little annoying pet peeve of mine, and so be it. All right, number 10 thing that I really hate about the Hobie Pro Angler is they do not have a good place for your paddle. Now, they do have a little paddle holders in the back behind your seat that you can uh, take your paddle apart and put one side on the left and the right. But they really don't have a good place to park your paddle. And you can buy aftermarket equipment or use some of the accessories that they provide to hang the paddle on the outside of the boat, and that is what I do. But again, when you're paying almost $6,000 for a kayak, you would think they could come up with a better solution for parking your paddle while you're on the boat, especially when you're not really going to use the paddle a whole lot. Now, I'm sure there are some people who say, well, yeah, well, I just put them on the back and those two clamps in the back and it's great. Well, that's fine if you don't have black packs or crates or coolers or batteries and when you get all that stuff in your back tank well there is really no space left for a paddle back there and uh, the same goes for the side rails you start putting all kinds of things on your h rail which i do i use the h rails for all kinds of accessories and then when you do that that even eliminates even more uh, a good place to park that paddle anyway like I said, there's really only four or five just ultimately absolutely hate items, but I wanted to make a top 10 list, so 
those other five items, uh, five, six items in the end, they are annoyances, but they definitely would not keep me from buying this boat. I hope this was helpful and informative. Please go check out my other video, the top 10 things I absolutely love about this kayak before you make your decision. Hopefully it was helpful and informative. So please smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, this is Mr. Bass. Happy kayak fishing.